one day, a very young Thomas Edison returned home from school with a sealed note from his teacher. Thomas had been told to give it only to his mother and to do it straight away as soon as he got home. He did as he was instructed, and as soon as he entered his house from school, he found his mother and said, My teacher gave me this envelope and told me to give it to you and only to you. His mother took the envelope from Thomas's hand, opened it up, and began to read the letter to herself. As she read, Thomas looked on as his mother's eyes started to fill with tears. Young Thomas hesitantly asked, What does it say, mother? His mother quickly wiped her eyes and looked proudly at her son and said, It says, Your son is a genius, and this school is too small for him and doesn't have enough good teachers to train him properly. Please teach him yourself. Thomas Edison, as you know, went on to become one of the greatest inventors in the history of the world. Many years later, after his mother had passed, he was going through an old closet in his family home and found the old envelope that contained the letter that he was given to him by his teacher to give to his mother all those years ago. Curious, he opened the envelope and pulled out the letter. The message read as follows. Dear Mrs. Edison, Your son is mentally ill. We cannot let him attend our school anymore. He is expelled. Edison became very emotional reading it. Later that evening, he wrote in his diary, Thomas Alva Edison was a mentally ill child whose mother turned him into a genius. What you now undoubtedly realize, what you now know, is the magical power of a mother. A mother's love, a mother's belief, can turn what society deemed a derelict into a genius. Left to the system and without a mother, Thomas Edison might have instead become a delinquent. Instead, Thomas's mother turned him into a genius, a creator, an inventor, a maker of things, and a solver of problems, a contributor, a person who ended up having a profound impact on the life of literally billions of people across the world, and all through the power of love and belief. That power is magical. That power, although acknowledged now, today, in honor of Mother's Day, is not only possessed by mothers, but also by fathers, by friends, by leaders, and yes, by many teachers too. In my own life, I experienced some of this love from my grandmother as a young boy selling papers in front of a casino in Sparks, Nevada. My grandmother taught me about creativity. And then, later in life, as a full-grown man, when I was reunited with my biological mother, she taught me to believe in myself through the wisdom of one of her early mentors, Jim Rohn. I was less than a year clean and sober, and my mother provided me a special ticket to a Jim Rohn seminar that included a personalized signed copy of his new limited edition hardbound book. My copy is number 251 of 2500. The copy is signed and dated 22191. It remains a prized possession. You see, it's not just those from a troubled life or those in recovery that struggle with belief. Most people don't believe in themselves. It takes somebody outside of them to inspire them, to encourage them, to believe in themselves. Many of us see ourselves as ordinary. It takes a mother, a father, a teacher, a friend, or a leader to point out extraordinary that we actually are. For a while, we might even have to borrow their belief because we don't have it ourselves. We can be powered entirely by the veracity of their belief in us. In my own life, it was through the belief of two early college friends, Jeff and Carmela, 
that I slowly began to believe in myself. For a long time, I borrowed their belief in me until I was finally ready to believe in myself. My mother saw something in me that I clearly did not see in myself. Dr. Patrick Leary, my biology professor, and Ray Rich, my psychology professor, both saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself. I acted on their faith, their belief in me. And because I acted, because we act, we end up achieving. Because achieving is not actually that hard if we just act. It is the getting ourselves to act part that is really hard. And that begins with belief. You can see why belief is so important. You see, people are far more capable than they believe. The only thing that they're missing is belief. And that is what you can give to them. You can lend them your belief. You can lend your belief in their potential, in their greatness. You can help them see what you see, what they do not yet see. You can be their champion. Soon, they will achieve the results to prove you right, to validate your belief, and then they will have it themselves and now will in turn be ready to offer it to somebody else. So, as we celebrate our amazing mothers, let us also realize that we too have the power and the responsibility to share our belief with others, to empower them, to encourage them, to point out how extraordinary they really are, even if they don't feel it or realize it themselves just yet. And in celebration of our beloved mothers, please feel free to reply to this message, to this story, and tell us one thing your mother empowered you to believe about yourself that has served you well for the rest of your life. I know we'd all love to read or hear about how your mother inspired the extraordinary person that you have become today. Be sure to capture your thoughts in your journal and share your empowering Mother's Day story with a friend or colleague. And let's create a real ripple of love and support on this Mother's Day. And to every mother, happy Mother's Day. The genius of a mother's love. Exact origin of the story unknown. Many versions exist. Whether this story is actually 100% true or not is immaterial. Thomas Alva Edison was indeed taught by his mother. She did indeed empower him to become a genius. That power rests in all of us. This story was voiced by yours truly, me, Bobby Kuntz, the Earth Hardest. I hope you found some value in this story. And a personal thank you to my grandmother and to my mother on this Mother's Day 2023. Thank you.